Hello, how's it going everybody? My name is Aquarium Alex and welcome to a new video. The theme of today's video will be all of the good stuff that is hiding within your filter, whether you are running a sponge filter, a bucket filter, if you are running internal, external, a sump, all of that, no matter what, this will be interesting for you. Now the filter takes care of keeping your water clean and crystal clear. Now, one of the things that does this, and we can't really see this, but this is actually because of a bunch of beneficial bacteria living inside of your filter. Now, besides that, there will also be a ton of microorganisms, some that are actually big enough for you to see with the bare eye without the need of a microscope or anything like that. And the microorganisms is what we will be mainly focusing on in this video. But in order to fully understand and appreciate why they are there, I wanna just take it a step back quickly and talk about the bacteria on your filters again, or inside of your filters. The bacteria is also what we refer to as biological filtering. Biological filtering happens when you have a bunch of different beneficial bacteria that will take care of any sorts of ammonia and nitrate when that stuff builds up in your aquarium. This happens when your fish produce waste. When you feed your fish, if you feed them too much, well then any leftover food will break down to ammonia and nitrite. Your filter is full of bacteria that is very good at dealing with all of this and they will break that down into more healthy chemical compounds that your fish will not take care of and stuff that you generally find in water so that these will be now beneficial chemicals. The alternative is toxic waste that builds up into your aquarium until you one day find that all of your fish are hanging with the bottom up because they died of toxic poisoning and this is actually seen quite often but that's not what we're going to talk about today so I'm going to cut it right here speak no more of bacteria because the only reason that we mentioned bacteria is that they are actually very beneficial for the microorganisms which we have a bunch of down here. The way that I harvested these was simply by emptying my filters for any sorts of microorganisms as I was giving them a clean and I'll run some footage of that in just a second but I just want to quickly give you a few points about why microorganisms are so interesting for our aquariums and why they are a good food source and they just benefit your aquarium. So when speaking of microorganisms, this could be anything from covipods to infusoria to paramecium, you name it. Anything that consists of, it could be 500 to 1000 cells, it could be more, it could be less. These are the ones that we will be focusing on and that we have in here. Three good things about these is that one, they eat a lot of algae in your aquarium. So they help keep your water super clean and give you that crystal clean water where you can see straight through the entire aquarium. They also provide a very good food source for any fry, which is what I'm using mine for. And I'll tell you what, there is nutrients down there to bring up batches of fish at the moment. And finally, they also help to keep bacteria levels stable because one of the main things about in, in any microorganism is that they feed off of bacteria. Bacteria is even smaller so small that we can't see them, which is why you can't say there's a bacteria there and there's a bacteria there. That's not gonna happen, but you can actually do that with microorganisms because again, as I said, around thousand cells is usually what you would refer to. I think I'm not a biologist, so this is simply from my own learning on the internet, but they come in many forms and many shapes and you can actually see hopefully in the video a few different ones. The main things that I managed to breed in this box right here is something like Kobe pots and paramecium. I have so much of that down here. There is also infusoria down here and there is stuff that I don't even know what is to be very honest, maybe you guys can help me with that once I show the footage of what I'm hiding in here, but I'm gonna wait a little bit with that just yet. Now, depending on what type of infusoria or not infusoria, microorganisms that you have grown, some of these can actually even live alongside your fish in your aquarium, which is nice because as I said, they will eat you the algae. But if you do raise fry in that set aquarium, well, then they will always be ready to eat food in the aquarium. It kind of depends on what sort of food source you get. But the Kobe pots that I have down there, I can dump those in my aquarium and they're gonna live next to my fish. And as long as they don't get eaten before they reproduce, well, then they should be able to keep a stable supply of it at all times and help keep the aquarium clean. For today's video, I set up the following experiment. The filter, bucket filter that I have down there, which takes care of my main tank over there. I cleaned that up, gave it a very thorough clean, rinsed all of the stuff inside of the filter just in the water from the aquarium. So I took all of the water in the bucket filter, emptied it over to a new bucket, took 
all of the ceramic rings and took all of the sponges and just rinsed those through so that I could get all of that dirty waste out of it and help the filter get a nice flow because I actually did see that the filter was super clean so this or super dirty so this was long overdue and it really helped the overall flow of the filter and the leftovers I simply stuffed in this box right here. What I've done with this box then is that I've just fed it with all sorts of plant matter. If I cut leaves that were bad, then I threw them in here. Besides that, I've dumped a bit of just a couple drops of milk every other day to just, just stimulate small bursts of bacteria growth which you get naturally if you have any sort of decaying product inside of inside of these. So this could be literally anything. This could be leftover, leftover salads. This could be, I don't know, oatmeal, whatever. You can pretty much stuff anything in there. Yeast is another good bacteria source. So if you want to make sure that you feed them, then yeast is a recommendation of mine. But that doesn't really matter. The matter of fact is that we have now a just a box full of life down here. And what I did is just that I stored this at room temperature. I actually stored it next to my InfoStore culture over there which I also keep alive with just a drop, couple drops of milk if you want to know more about Infosoria I also did a video in, in, on Infosoria that you can actually see I'll leave a link to it up I think they appear up here don't they <laughs> and then after a couple weeks this is what we have left now I would love to show you guys this but I'm honestly not sure if the light settings here allow for it but I am gonna give it a shot and then let's see what happens so I'll bring you guys in for a look here. Now, I do not know if we can actually focus on this. There is not a whole lot going on. I think I just stirred it up here. Let's see if we can get some. They usually tend to hide down below the waist there, but if you just give it a good shake and then film it, I don't know, five to 10 minutes after, then you will be able to see it. I'll just run some footage on the screen while I explain this so that you can see that there is actually plenty of life down here, but you will need a little bit of a better camera than what that thing right there provides right now. So that's why you can't really see much. But as you can see from the images here, there is plenty of stuff going on down here. There's plenty of stuff flying around all over the place. And the great thing about this is that I can now keep this culture alive and have a wide variety of different microorganisms that I can feed my fry fish and they can grow on. Well, that's enough talking. I'm going to show you guys how I actually set all of this up so that you can reproduce this yourself the next time that you tend to clean your filters. So I just sat down here next to my bucket filter right now, right there. And I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me see if I can if I can zoom properly into this. But it is so full of all sorts of gunk. And one of the most interesting things is that it's also full of life. So we'll be taking that thing apart in just a second and I'll show you the entire process so that you can see what I will be doing through in the entire process in case you want to replicate it and you want to try this out for yourself. But I promise you that that thing right there is full of life. So let's get into the action. I just discovered on my glass that one of my shrimps decided to crawl into freedom. Apparently that was, I always hate to see this. What a shame. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> this little fellow was lying on top of the glass. forgot you it's not like I'm some vampire that lives in the dark but I tried to put them put on the blinders here just so you guys get a little bit of a better lighting so you can actually see what's happening I don't know if it helped hopefully it did I can for good reasons not see what's going on on the screen right now so I'll have to see once I edit if this has just been a massive failure but we were supposed to talk about that thing behind there sorry I'm getting carried away here now as I dismantle this I want to be a little bit careful about it because I kind of had to just go nuts with stripping down this thing and just completely seal tightening this with a set of one of these called in English. Is it tweezers? I don't know. Zip ties. There it was. Zip ties. So we had to zip tie that thing down. Ugh, there we go. And this is when all of the yucky good stuff and most importantly, all of the live things that we need are going to start coming out. 
So I just brought you over here because I want you to see this. I need you to see this. You see all that gooey stuff down there? That's where all the life happens. The sponge has actually clogged a bit. It's been a bit too long since I cleaned this up last time, which is definitely my bad. So I am just gonna let you in on the process here. So we wanna pick up this thing right here. I just push down a bit. Oh my God, there is a lot in there. I'm just gonna put everything in the bucket here. The reason that I'm doing this, if you have not taken apart a bucket filter before, is simply because of the fact that you wanna rinse all your stuff in the actual water that's down here, because this water is still full of all of those beneficial bacteria that we need in order to break down bad things in the water. But that's a good thing now, and maybe I should show you what I'm doing here instead of just showing you a bucket. But here is one of these sponges. Here is another one of the sponges. You can see that thing is, I mean, just look at this. It's absolutely disgusting, which is beautiful. The more disgusting it is, the more full of life it'll also be. What was that? <laughs> that looked an awful lot like a fish. I don't know if it was. Also, I just need this thing. By the way, I covered this in just some basic nylon sock because honestly, it's gonna suck up all of your baby fish then. I kind of use my community tank as somewhat of a breeder tank as well because I don't have room for anything else. That was very loud, I am so sorry if it was. And you can see there's more goo down there. Which some would refer to as life. So we need that thing out as well. Get out of there, perfect. And this is where we kind of just want to rinse everything off. So we we want to make sure that we, we still do this in the water, but we can get a decent amount of all that junk out of there. You see that? I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to go away again just for a little bit. I'm gonna put you over here. Bucket. Rinse with a bit of water. It's not like you're gonna kill the entire bacteria and flora in there just because you rinse a pot with water. So if you have something that is very dirty, don't be afraid to rinse it with water. You're not gonna destroy anything. So the next thing you wanna do is simply just dig in your hands into all of this yuck in here and rinse out all of these organic pellets here. And as you can see, when they come up from there, they are still dirty but not nearly as dirty as before. I'm also just gonna take the sponge and just squeeze out all of that dirty goo from there. And again, the reason that we wanna do this is simply because <laughs> there's so many good life, good bacteria in there. And there are so many micro everything in there that the more you can get out, basically the better. And I know this was not supposed to be a how do you dismantle your bucket filter tutorial, but I wanna be kind of thorough with this because you've, if you've not taken a part of this before, but you found this video because you wanna see what lives inside of your filter, well, I might as well explain to you how you do this in case you wanna do this yourself after watching this video. So now we only need to add the sponges back in again. Just gonna give them a little soak in the dirty water down here so we can get some of that stuff back into it. Same thing with the cotton thingy here. And there we go, that was pretty simple. Oh, I wish you could see this. I don't think, I don't know if there's any way to show you this. I'm gonna see if I can show you this because this is actually quite exciting. Let me bring my light over here. So take a peek at this. You see how dirty this is right now? But more important, do you see how this is already separating? You can see how we have some clear water there and then we have all the gunk at the bottom. We wanna let that sit for just a little bit. And basically the longer that sits, the more it's gonna separate and then we can suck all of the good stuff up from the bottom. So I'm gonna let this sit for just 10 minutes while I prepare the top that we are gonna use to store all of these things where they can grow for about a week and we'll check back on it in a week and see what's in there. But first we need to put it in a proper container. So that was pretty much the process and here is the final result. Now, if you wanna do this yourself, you just gotta do what I did, basically. These are not hard to take care of at all. People tend to say that, you know, you gotta have air supply, you gotta have a steady flow of the water to make sure that you get that CO2 shifted out of the water and get some oxygen inside. I personally just give this a stir every other day. And again, as I said, <laughs> there's just so much life down there, especially the Kobe pots are just exploding down there at the moment. And they are a very, very efficient algae eater. So I'm very happy about this. I'm actually gonna go ahead and empty about half of the stuck in here. Hopefully I can filter that out. Maybe just a bit of the water. I don't wanna put too much of this water into my aquarium, but I'm gonna see how much of this I can actually get into my fry tank down below and just have those explode in numbers before I get my next, next the batch of German blue rain fry, which are then gonna grow up down there for a bit of time. And hopefully there will be a nice food source for them. So that was actually all I had for you in today's video. I really hope you can put this to good use. If you can, I'd much appreciate a subscribe so you can always stay updated to the videos. This is a new channel, so any support is much welcome. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. Until next time, bye-bye.